Well, welcome to Ramblings from the Rectory. I can't believe that I am doing this, but since Sister Christian has become the new Cecil B. DeMills of our parish, and also my producer and director, she has talked me into doing this recording for you all today. Uh, I'm rather apprehensive considering the fact that I have a better face for radio than I do for TV. But I would like to first of all thank Sister Christian, Mike, and Mia Braithorn, Lisa and Melissa, for helping us do our Sunday liturgies that are so well attended um, on the website. It's very strange to be doing this continually, especially to be celebrating Mass without a congregation. You are definitely missed, and I hope that very soon we will all be back celebrating the Eucharist together. It uh, is rather strange to be preaching to an empty church. Uh, it's uh, always the great interaction that we have as we celebrate the Eucharist and know the presence of the Lord, the risen Lord among all of us as we come together to do the Eucharist and to make Christ present through his word and sacrament. And hopefully very soon uh, we'll be doing that again. Uh, it's kind of like having a uh, Broadway show without any audience, but hopefully in the near future uh, that'll change. We're waiting to hear from the Archbishop and also from the, uh, the powers to be that are making the decisions about our future and how long we must continue to do these things. Until then, uh, we'll continue to do what we need to do. And I guess that's the question. What uh, should we be doing? Well, first of all, know that Father Freddie and I are definitely thinking about you. We miss you, and we're praying for you. We've been celebrating Mass, uh, each of us um, taking our turns posting it, but also doing it privately privately for all of you and remembering you in our prayers daily. Um, remember, the church is open every day, uh, usually from 9 o'clock until about 6.30 in the afternoon or the evening. The Eucharistic app, uh, chapel is always open, but make sure that you keep your social distance. And uh, Mass is posted every day by 12 noon on our website. Confessions are heard on Saturdays from 3.30 until 4.15 as normal, but they're being done in the sacristy uh, with a distance, with a screen between, and there are chairs that are appropriate, appropriately set up in the, the narthex to keep your spacing, and then you will also know when people are coming and going. Today is the 1st of May, which is hard to believe. It's the Feast of St. Joseph the Worker, but it's also the month that is dedicated to the Blessed Mother. Maybe a couple of things to do as a family is to think first in terms of uh, finding that statue or that image of the Blessed Mother and putting it in a prominent place. Maybe it's a question of making the old-fashioned May altars with uh, maybe some flowers from the yard. Or using the statue of the Blessed Mother as a um, centerpiece for the table as you eat every night. And maybe after saying your meal prayer, also say a Hail Mary for the intention of the Holy Father and for our church. Uh, maybe it's a question of doing the uh, rosary together, which sometimes can be boring because it seems to be so repetitious. But what I like to do when I pray the rosary is before every Our Father, Hail Mary, and Glory Be, is to think of a particular person and then to make that prayer for them at that particular time. Today, a special event is taking place. Uh, the bishops of our country and also of Canada are rededicating and consecrating our countries to the Blessed Mother. Uh, speaking of Canada, on this day in 1647, Francis Laval was ordained a priest, and he would become the first bishop of Canada, or at that time was known as New France. This was all in the Little White Book, if you uh, read it this morning. And there are still many Little White Books available. They're up in the narthex. Uh, you can come in and get them anytime. Uh, during the day when church is open. Remember, it's not too late to even begin these because there are still four more weeks left of Easter. There's a lot to read in the little white book and also to pray about. I guess one of the big questions is, what have Father Freddie and I been doing? That's a good question. Well, all of you know, because I've gotten emails and tweets about it, Father Freddie got a haircut. That's about all I can tell you. What I've been doing is celebrating daily Mass, reading books. In fact, I'd like to offer a few suggestions. Um, one, if you're a historian, is a great book by John Meacham, who's a fantastic historian, and it's called The American Gospel. It's a very interesting look at the theology, 
the philosophy, and the uh, characters that are our founding fathers. And you might find this very, very interesting from the point of view of what was their philosophy, what was their religious belief, uh, what were their battle cries. Uh, you might be surprised and even shocked. Uh, it's very interesting that, for example, Thomas Jefferson, who wrote the Declaration of Independence, um, was an individual who, in his family Bible, excised every passage that had to do with Jesus and his divinity. Obviously, theologically, he didn't believe in the divinity of Christ. Interesting. Another great book, which is also not just an understanding of Scripture, the person of Jesus, but it's called Jesus, a Pilgrimage. It's uh, James Martin's book on his trip to the Holy Land, which incorporates excellent Scripture excellent Christology, and also marvelous examples of places that match the scriptures that he talks about. It's not just a good read, it also is a spiritual journey. And finally, for a little humor, Mobituaries. Mobituaries, it's a book that has been put out by Mo Rocca. Maybe some of you have seen him on Sunday morning. It is very hilarious because it talks about things that have died. Everything from sitcom comedies to people who have died that really were famous at one time but didn't get any reference to their death. Um, for example, Edgar Allan Poe. What happened to him? Quote the raven nevermore. Not to mention, did you know that Thomas Jefferson and John Adams, bitter enemies, actually died on the same day? So did Michael Jackson and Farrah Fawcett. All very interesting little tidbits that are in this book. The other thing that I've been doing, obviously, is cooking. I'm on a soup kick. And I would just like to offer um, one great recipe that is easy and is fantastic. It is asparagus, cream of asparagus soup with cheese and lemon. It calls for two bunches of asparagus, two tablespoons of unsalted butter, two medium onions chopped, three cloves of garlic, and six cups of chicken stock. But if you want to really make it good, you only use five and you use one cup of wine. What you basically do is take the butter and melt it, throw in the chopped up asparagus spears, into about half inch pieces along with the onion and the garlic. Let it saute until it gets translucent and then throw in the stock and the white wine. And after that, just let it simmer. When it all is nice and tender, take a blender, blend it all. And then after you've done that, remove it from the stove, put in one half cup of Parmigiano Reggiano cheese, and then two tablespoons of lemon. Fantastic. No, it doesn't have any cream. Sister's trying to tell me you're supposed to put cream in it, but it doesn't have cream in it. So, producer, please stay out of it. What else can I tell you? Well, gardening. I've been working out in the yard. There's nothing like playing in the dirt, getting close to nature. Remember, we are dust, and into dust we shall return. But playing in the dirt is cheaper than a psychiatrist. And if you drive around the back, you'll see that the deck is becoming the hanging gardens of Babylon. Gardening comes, of course, with fighting squirrels. We have a chipmunk that even invaded my garage and got into the birdseed not to mention the damn deer. And I'm sure that all of you know that feeling. Finally, just a few words of thanks. First of all, thanks to, to Tara, to our teachers, our aides, our catechists, uh, for all the work they've been doing. I'm sure that many of you parents are uh, much more appreciative of what teachers do every day. They work very hard, and they've been working very hard in these days, too, in order to keep our students on the straight and narrow but also to make sure that they are able to keep up with their work and their education. Remember, we still have registration open for school. There's some of you families that have not sent in your registration forms yet. 
And you can go on the website to sign up for our Family Faith Formation and also for our PSR for next year. We're not exactly sure when this is all going to open, what we're going to be able to do. But uh, as soon as we find out things and we come up with uh, methodologies for everything, it'll be happening. Thanks to all the people who were part of organizing the parade on Easter Sunday. We had over 400 cars come by, and there were between, even in some cars, four and five people. So I estimate there were probably about 1,200 people that came by for a blessing on Easter Sunday. And it was monumental, at least in my mind, for me. A great, great experience that I will never forget, and I'm sure none of you will. Also, thanks to all the people who have been continuing to work at the Vincent Paul Society, helping those people that are in need at this particular time. And if you have anything to drop off, canned goods or whatnot, please do so. You know where the collection area is in Mary's room. Also, thanks to everyone who has been sending in their money for our collection. Those who are sending envelopes through the mail, our people dropping them off at the office, are the people who are now new people on the um, regular, what do they call it? I can't even think of it. Uh, Faith Direct. Faith Direct. And if you want to sign up for Faith Direct, please do. Uh, believe it or not, we've had about eight new parishioners sign up in the past uh, couple of weeks um, on the website. And um, we welcome them. Uh, I already mentioned about um, Mass in, I mean, uh, Confessions in the Sacristy. And don't forget daily Mass at 12 noon, 4.30 it's posted, and then it's all day Sunday on the website. Um, finally, if there's anything that anyone needs, make sure that you call either uh, the rectory or text or email us, and we'll get um, to you as possible, as quickly as possible. Um, thanks to all the people who have dropped off masks, cookies, cakes, especially the people who have dropped off wine. That helps us all. And um, many thanks for being faithful and patient parishioners. Let us continue to pray for one another. Let us pray especially for our, those retired priests who are suffering because of this sickness at this particular time. And um, peace, love, and joy.